All right. Hello there. Hello, Pug. Um, I accidentally put Mordhau as the game I'm going to be playing initially. It will be Escape from Tarkov at first, and then we're going to switch over to Mordhau later. So initially, we're just going to do a shorter stream today. I think we've gotten the feel for everything. Hey, hey, Redis. I think we've got a, a feel for this whole thing where I'm going to be streaming every day. At least I'm feeling up for a full stream today. So that's what we're going to do. Um... And we'll just see how it goes, and then uh, we'll continue forward Thursday. We'll see about Friday, but I think from here on out, I'm probably going to be doing full streams. Hey, Miss Downey. Okay, Doki, let's get into Tarkov here. Also, I, I was a little, I looked at um, Tarkov this morning, and I had a lot of insurance coming in. So one of the uh, quests that I'm kind of stuck on, I should be able to get into doing uh so that's good <laughs> it gives me some direction to go forward because i think with tarkov it really helps uh me to have like something to focus on like i think that's one of the things that really helps me with tarkov like with this game is the quest give me a direction something something to do whereas i feel like if all i did was just go out on the map and just look to fight uh, other players every time over and over again i think this game would get old for me uh but having objective like either objectives i can come up with myself or objectives the game gives me gives the game more weight and gives me more enjoyment i'm not really sure what they're going to do with a lot of these quests in the future but i really hope they keep them around even if they do change because I, I think my big complaint is some of the quests are just too too grindy and too um too annoying at times. Um, and I don't think there's anybody that plays Tarkov that will disagree with me that some quests are just a little bit unfun. All right, we got that captured. Let me go ahead and get the um, stream timer started. There we go. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, so uh, as far as like everything goes, I got my one of my guns back in insurance. And this gun has actually been my lucky gun, more or less. It had, uh, it's gotten at least, I think, 12 of the kills for this quest, which is a quarter of what you need to do. Um, so if I can continue to do good things with this this particular gun, now I have burned it out a little bit. You start at 100 durability, and I've, I've dropped that down to 92.3. Uh, you can repair it. Don't really feel like I need to until it gets maybe closer to 70. But fired a lot of rounds through this thing, so it's starting to get a little beat up. And we'll just see how it goes. I do need to insure some things and get a backpack and be ready to go. Let's go ahead and just use this smaller backpack. Not exactly sure where we're going to go just yet. Um, I can either go to Interchange or Shoreline. I'm kind of leaning towards Shoreline because I need to get more kills. Although my gun isn't really necessarily set up for Shoreline. Uh, yeah, this is my Shoreline thing. So, grab that. That there. Uh, grab that and that. Okay, we should be ready after I insure a lot of the stuff I got here. So we're going to insure this in case we, you know, we die. So, insure all the armor, insure this. Alright, so we got comms, we, it's not necessarily, it's actually probably the worst comms, but I, I got it uh, with an easy trade, so I figure I might as well pick it up and use it. I uh, got the UN armor, which is required for this quest. One of the big problems for this quest and why it's been giving me a lot of trouble is the guns that I'm using are very expensive. The armor is really crap. So if I get shot, the likelihood I'll survive through it is not high. But it's a lot of investment money because the ammo I'm using is very expensive. The gun I'm using is very expensive. So every time I die, it hurts a lot uh, from a money standpoint. But I have a lot of money, so I just need to learn to get over it and not really worry about it too much because I can recover from this even though it is a lot of mon monetary investment. I'm not exactly sure how much this gun would be worth if I were to sell it. Um, you know what? Let's just do a really quick experiment here. How much would this gun be worth if I sold it to a trader? That's going to be like half of what it's really worth, but it gives us a little bit of an idea of what kind of monetary investment we have involved in this thing. So we'll sell it to like see what uh, the mechanic would, would want for, with, for it. That'd give us a little bit of an indicator. So he'd give me 129849 That's probably half what it's worth. So this thing's probably worth 250 k the one gun. So every time we die, that's 250k down the drain. Um, 
if we don't get it back, of course. So that's kind of where this is at, why this is kind of a frustrating quest, because the armor sucks so bad and you can't really uh, protect your investment as easily. Okay, so we're more or less ready to go. Let's see what the time frame is. Uh, Shoreline. I'm going to go with the PM, I think. Please give that a try. Um, double check our insurance and that we have everything we need. We have medicals. We have our bag. We're not bringing anything we're not supposed to, but we're bringing everything we need. Okay, looks good. Um, let's ready up. A little quiet this morning. It was, it's kind of strange because on Monday when I played this game, it was really busy. Um, I'm not sure if it will quiet down. I, I know a lot of people got uh, excited because there was a trailer that they put out um, recently. Escape from Tarkov did. Uh, it was live action, so it didn't really show anything gameplay-wise, but it gives people, like, some, you know, pump up this that, um, things are happening. We know that the, uh, the big patch is coming soon, and that might be an indicator that it, you know, we're getting some progress in that regard. But again, live action, not gameplay footage, so you really don't necessarily get a strong impression of how far along the, uh, the patch is and when that's going to happen. The other thing that's a problem with this armor is it's bright blue. So it really stands out. <laughs> we'll be okay. The big problem with this gun is I don't have a scope on it. I just have a red dot. Uh, and Shoreline can have some longer range shots. So it'll be tougher. It's not that they'll be impossible. They'll just be tougher to pull off. But we do have the best ammo for this weapon. So if we are against a geared guy, as long as we have the drop on him, if it's a fair fight, it's a problem because of the armor. But if we get the drop on him, um, we could do good damage with this ammo. Have a good chance of piercing even the, some of the best armor. We just got to make the shots count. But if the bad guy sees me first or we see each other at roughly the same time and start firing at the same time, it's going to come down to skill and gear, but will make up for a lot of your gear, uh, your shortcomings of skill. I'm not going to say I'm the most skilled player out there. And if I have a gear uh, disadvantage on top of that, it gets tough. All right, we're waiting a while, so it might be a dead server, which is actually going to be to our benefit. Um... As far as doing this quest, because we're here to kill NPCs. That's what the quest is. So what, what this quest is, if you haven't seen me play this uh, so far um, recently, is I have to kill 12 scavs. Scavs are uh, NPC characters, although they can be player controlled. Mostly they're NPC characters. Uh, I have to kill 12 on just about every map with this setup. You have to have an M4 and the two UN armor things, the, the vest and the helmet. So that's that's the stipulation. So it's four maps. The two maps you don't have to do it on is uh, labs and the factory. Those are the two you don't have to do it on. But every other map you do. So interchange, woods, uh, shoreline, and customs. I already knocked out woods and customs. So all I have left is interchange. I need one kill. And shoreline, I think I need four. So this is the one I'm the most behind on. The other thing that makes this tricky is I cannot use night vision with this helmet. There's no way to connect night vision to it. So uh, it will get dark because I did evening. So as time goes on, it will be daylight at first. But as time goes on, uh, it will get um, dark. So we, uh, we have to prepare for that. We'll just go in the house and put me out in front of. Which I think is like one of the crummier houses, but we'll go ahead and give it a little looty looty. So that we've accomplished something on this map before we die. Um, okay, this is not the house I thought it was, but this is still a crummy house. Because all we got is a toolbox. Which has nothing of note in it. And a jacket. Oh, painkillers, that's not bad. And the uh, Zippo, we'll put that there. All right. Normally, I'm good about closing doors if that's the natural state. I don't really care about that door because there's another outer door here. All right. So that's the shop over across the way. Hmm. Okay. 
think I have a rough idea of where I am. Go full auto here, because it's kind of closer ranges. Ah, this is where I am, huh? I don't like being where I am right now. Um... There's a good chance I run into another player. And I don't think there's a direction I can go in to really avoid it easily. So we'll just take advantage of the looting we can do and hopefully we don't catch it a player like right away. Sodium. Let's hit this up. Empty. Uh, where are we on the raid? Maybe a little late in the raid? As well. Not a good thing. Looks like a water bottle on the ground. Pick that up. Let's hit this cash register and then get out of here. Empty. Oh, that's a lot of empty crap that we're coming across. Go, go, go. I have a little bit of a strategy on how I want to... I don't know if this door is normally open. It could be. I'm just misremembering. We'll give it a look-see. Ah. Duffel on a few jackets check. I do have a quest to level up my charisma, so searching a lot of things is going to level that up. Just listening a bit here. Thought I heard something, but it could just be paranoia. There could be scavs up on Scav Island, but I've kind of discovered that going to Scav Island early in the match is probably a mistake. Because um, a lot of players go there. A lot of times I've done that. I've, I've, I've gotten to player fights. Um, my survival right in those circumstances are not usually good. Because what happens is the player fight starts. And then um, it draws a lot of other players that are in the area. Um, and I've had times where I've run into like three different teams all on like a very, you know, short span of time and you just, you get caught and you get killed. So. And even though this is, uh, took a while to get a match in here, I can't take for granted that I'm alone. Or I, I can't assume that. I forget, did I check this? I sure did. Getting a lot of empty containers here. We're gonna hit one more point of interest in this village. And then we're going to move on. I haven't really decided on where I want to go just yet. Fine. The cigarettes are worth like six grand. Me? Measuring tape on the table there. Ooh, condensed milk. That's a good find. Condensed milk is very valuable. Um, it's a good trade good, like barter-wise. A lot of players look for it. 
Ooh, a car battery too. Uh, we're definitely going to want that. Put that up. That's going to be good for a couple different reasons. First off, it'll weigh me down. So I'm at 43.8 kilograms, and my overweight uh, limit is 42. And because I'm overweight now, um, I'll build up strength, which is another thing I need to do for a quest. Not necessarily strength, but there's a skill that you also level up at the same time you level up strength, so... We're pretty much full on loot. Nothing necessarily spectacular, but it's something. All right, so I gotta get going while we still have daylight here, because it's gonna start getting dark. Okay, I have a kind of strategy what I want to do. We'll see if it works out. Sometimes there are going to be scavs that patrol the, this hill area here. I just wanted to keep a little eye out for that. I'm tempted to go take a peek at uh, Scav Island while we still have daylight. I just am afraid I'm going to get killed if I try and do it. Well, hopefully luck is with me. Ah, the fog. I can't see a damn thing. Oh, there's a scav right there. Oh, the temptation. We gotta go get him. This might get me killed. But I definitely saw a scav move there. With the fog, there's no way I'm getting that long-range shot. It'd be a nice, easy, long-range shot for me. But there's no way I'm getting that with the fog in the low-light conditions at the moment. So, we're gonna go get him. I do have a suppressor, so some of my shots will be wider than normal. I only saw one, but there could be up to three or more. Well, three is, I think, usually. I saw them right to left. Don't know if that's the same one or a different one. And usually, if you're lucky, they just sit here, dumb, and you can just mow them down, but that guy's active. He may see me before I see him, and then aimbot the crap out of me. Which would piss me off quite a lot if that happened. Might just be one. You think he's behind this boathouse. Where are you, buddy? He's inside the boathouse. Behind it. Okay, just checking around for others. I did hear a gunshot. Sounded like, um... The... Oh, he had a hunter. What an ass. Like, if he had hit me with that, I would have died. I'm gonna try and take his ammo. At least some of it. Because this is kind of valuable ammo. Okay, because we heard a shot at the gas station. I feel like we should get out of here. Um, we'll just... Uh, there's no point in checking anything. We're full up on loot. Screw this. I mean, I might find more valuable loot, but I don't want to get caught on the island. We got our one kill. I think that was the only dude that was there. If there's a guy at the gas station, he might come this way and if he heard my shots, so... Let's just get off this island. Okay, one down. Three more to go. The comms helped there a lot, because I could hear his footsteps before he came to me. He 
Yeah, a lot of that's comms. I have uh, I have a uh, headset on, which amplifies the noise of a lot of things, so that's why it's so loud. Uh, if I didn't have the comms on, it would have been a lot quieter. Um, but that that's the advantage somebody else has if they have comms, right? If they had comms and I didn't, they would hear that volume of stuff, so... This is also kind of a crummier set of comms, so... It doesn't sound as good as some of the better ones. But it's still an advantage, because I heard that scab come and I knew where he was. I could hear him walking on wood. At first I thought he was in the boathouse, but I was able to reorient. But I knew he was close to where I was, so I was prepared for him, you know? Pop off our tea while we wait. Granted, we are wasting daylight, which is unwise. But, um... Okay. That's one thing that with comms is kind of deceiving. You have to get used to it. Is because if you run without them for a long period of time, you hear gunshots and then you get confused on where their distance is. Like, I heard that gunshot, and it sounded pretty decently loud to me. But if I didn't have the comms on, they would have been a lot quieter. So, that guy's further away than my natural instincts would say. But I think he's at the gas station, if I were to guess. Which means he may be coming this way. Um, but we're going to go power station. Now... That shot might have been at the power station, but we'll find out fairly soon if it's power station or not. Let's go back to single shot. That's one of the complaints about comms is that um, it makes everything louder, right? So your, your own footsteps are loud. Um, but again, keep in mind, this is the crummier set of comms. The question is, with the fog and how dark it is, will I be able to see the guy up on the power station? Not sure. I'll have to see when I get there. Yeah, uh, dusk and dawn, it being dusk right now, is your worst time for light. Um, just because you don't get the moonlight and the starlight helping you. Um, but the light is definitely dimming. Uh, I think I see the sniper scav. Yeah, he's gone I'm patrolling around the building. So somebody has not killed him yet. It's going to be a tough shot. Um, but let's just dial in our sights. I'd say he's about 150 meters tops, or, or more. So we're going to top out our sight at 150 meters. And we're just going to wait for him to... He's at the far side of the building right now. We're going to wait for him to... He'll patrol around. We could try and take the shots, but if there's that guy at the gas station, we don't want to take a shot that's not ideal just yet. Yeah, I think he's on our side of the building now, but he is... Um, that tree is kind of obscuring my vision. Right there. Don't know if I hit him or not. One way we can kind of cheat this. Go to our task. Um, no, I don't think we got him. I see him. Got him. Alright, let's get the F out of here. Um, first off, we need to dial back down to our sights to 50 meters. Then get the F out. We fired a lot there, so anybody that was listening, if they're near the gas station, that means they're near the power station, so we need to get our position moved. I sure hope I got him. It looked like he went down, but he may have just went prone. But if he did that, we can't really stick around to check. We could always double back and make sure he's dead, but... I saw him drop. That's the important thing. All right, we can calm down now. It's going to start getting dark. So it'll be a little hard for you guys to see for a little while. Just keep in mind, it's also hard for me to see. But I have a little bit better than you guys. I can see a little bit better. Okay, the next place I want to go to is the terminal. It has a pretty good chance of uh, spawning at least one scab. Um, very, very uncommon where you have nobody be here. You could have up to three, and if it has up to three, then we get our quest done. Um, I do want to find a spot to, like, lay down in a bush and then reload my mag, though, because we fired quite a few shots. And if we got the opportunity, we should take it. Because it does take time to reload your mag. Probably want to drink our bottle of water at some point, but 
You know, I'll drink a little bit of it right now. So we'll use, let's say, 30, which is about half. Oh, that's good enough. I oftentimes like to drink the whole thing just so it gets out of my inventory, but... Okay, range is going to be somewhat close, so we're going to go with the full auto here. Uh, we need to reload, though, so we have our big mag in. At this point, we're going to want... See, there's the power station right there. We're going to want the close range engagements. You know, I could lay down in a bush and check to see if I got that kill. Because, again, when you have a quest like this, you can kind of cheat that way. Pass. Um, yeah, we got it. So we just need two more now. And if there's two at the uh, bus terminal here, then that will be the two we need. Uh, there's definitely a player somewhere on the map, though. We heard a gunshot. Okay, let's be careful here, because it's going to be... I heard a scab talk. Sounded like over that way. It's going to be hard to make them out, so if they aimbot me, I'm going to be in trouble. Let's see if we can go around and get closer to where I think I heard the sound. Being quiet for a second, see if we hear anything. Right in front of me. Where are you? I cannot see a damn thing. I don't have a flashlight, so. Don't think that was at me. Could have been. I didn't see the flash, though. That could have been our boy with the rifle. Picking one off. Which is disconcerting. It means he's right on top of me. If that was the boy, he was up top. Over that way. Um, we might be able to get the drop on him here. If he, like, killed the scab and is looting him. He doesn't know I'm here. Um, we might be able to kill while that looting is happening. Either that or the scab saw me and shot at me. Which I have no confirmation of. Ugh, I don't know what to do here. What do we think that was? See the scav? He just went left to right. Very hard to see him, though. Could have been the scav firing at me. Because if there was a player that did that shot, why isn't he killing the other one? This door is normally open, though. Can't tell if that's a scab or not. No, I think it's just the fence. But these doors are not normally open. Damn, it's just too dark, man. I know there's a scab out there somewhere. I just can't see him. Let's do a little checky-checky here. If this is empty, we know somebody's been here. Damn it. Um, uh, that's not necessarily a confirmation. If it was full, we know somebody was not there. Check this. Give me something so I know that there's. Okay, this is this has not been checked. Kind of want that. Go. Yeah. 
sometimes scavs open the doors like when they spawn in they might come through here which might be why the doors are open so it's kind of hard for me to tell for sure oh no somebody's been here that was taken oh man so was that a player scav he came in popped a scav and walked away That's a dead body right there. You just barely make it out. I think that's what happened. That movement I saw. Right to left. I'm sorry, left to right. Was whoever killed the scav. And I think it was another... It was a player scav. Just people do that. I think that's what happened. So unfortunately the scavs I wanted to kill are gone. All right. So we got to come up with a different strategy. And unfortunately, night descended a little faster than I would have liked. I got to be careful here. Because we know that there's a player of some type in the area. Whether it's a player scav or not, I don't know. I say we just reposition, we go somewhere else. The, um... As the longer, uh, the longer we wait, as soon as that sun goes down, we'll actually be able to see better, so... We still have got plenty of time on the map. Let's just be patient. I think I'm gonna go to the weather station, maybe? We'll switch back to single fire in case we have a long range shot we need. Okay, so we got two kills. That's kind of a success, but I'd like to get this quest taken care of if I can. But if it's too problematic for me to be able to see anything, I might just leave. Also, the longer we're on the map, the more I get to build up my strength by carrying this car battery around. <laughs> Let's chill for a second. Kind of evaluate our position. In life. I'm kind of glitch it was causing us to move around. I'm like, holy crap, there's all this noise. Um, use. We use like 15. Full auto. This might be dangerous. I've seen sometimes like three, five scavs up on this area. If nobody comes in and, and wipes them out, they can really collect up here. Then again, there may not be anything. That happens. This is not a, a spawn, I would say, is a guarantee place. We're going to slow roll in here and try and look for them. In these night conditions, I want to make sure I get the drop on them. If they're at all here. Looks clear so far, but... Let's see in a sec. Hmm. 
Okay. Do some looting then. A little bit of cash. What's this on the ground? It's like a CPU, we definitely want to pick that up. Then because I have a quest to search stuff, I'm going to search all these filing cabinets. Which should build me up a decent amount of skill. Skill I'm needing to build up is Charisma. So I have a, I have a little ways to go. Uh, we don't need that. Mirrors, I'll take that. There's, you know, a handful of file cabinets here, so it should build up that stat nicely. More euros, that's always good to see. Room key, we'll just throw that in there. Few more to go. Hard drive, matches. Okay, lighter. You know I'm just gonna use this, and then we'll grab the hard drive. Okay. Come on, pick it up. Go. Lamp. Well, yeah, I mean, the joke I made is that there's, you know, pick up line pamphlets and other stuff like that. Self-improvement little pamphlets in there. But they're all in Russian, though, so it's Russian pickup lines. How good those are is up to you to judge. <laughs> uh, blood set. That's probably worth taking over matches. Worth a little bit of money. Caracola. We'll just down it right. Uh, I don't really have any um, lack of hydration though. We'll keep a hold of it for just now. Uh, squash. Okay. Where's that duffel bag right here? Pomegranate juice and bolts. Matches are kind of valuable. Let's throw this out. All right, I think that's good enough. As long as there's no more scabs that have shown up. There's a couple things I can search outside. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm greedy enough to do it. Because we've actually got a pretty good haul here. Uh, then again, we might be able to find a flashlight. <laughs> oh, there's some type of gun here. Nah, not really worth too much. Let's that. Kind of dead as far as the scavs go, and the only one we we um, had a chance of, I think uh, somebody killed. Whether it was a player or not, I don't know, but... I think I saw them for an instant, and then they're gone. Oh, there's the uh, stars, so light lighting should get a little bit better. Let's switch back to single shot. We try checking the gas station. Although I think a player already has been there. Got a little under a half an hour to go. I don't think it would hurt to check it. All we need is one kill. One or two? Two, I think. So even just one helps. But yeah, in this game, Charisma is linked to a couple other skills. Uh, awareness or Alertness, I think it's called. And Perception. Both of those you level up through um, 
searching, more or less. There's also another skill that's supposed to play into it called intellect, but intellect has not been implemented in the game yet. Yeah, I go home with the loot if I survive. Yeah, Mistani. Um, and if I die, everything I brought in gets lost. I did ensure a lot of things, which is what this little gold um, shield means. Uh, so if if nobody else loots it and takes it home after a couple days, and when I say a couple days, I mean in, in real life days, um, the guy I paid to in, uh, insure it, he'll come by and scoop it up and give it back to me. Uh, but there's a number of things you can't insure, like the ammunition I can't insure, and, it, and the ammunition is pretty darn expensive, so... It's kind of a big loss when you lose it. Like, the ammo I have on me... Probably worth about $800. And dollars are valuable in this game. Because your main currency is uh, rubles. There's three currencies in the game. Uh, rubles, uh, dollars, and euros. And you've seen me picking up euros, so there's that. Euros are worth the most. Dollars next, and then rubles... Are well be well below the other other ones, but this being uh, a Russian-speaking area, like that's the main that's the main currency they use. So most of the things that you buy from dealers and what have you are going to be in ruble prices. Can't make out if that's a dude or not. I don't think so. With as dark as it is, uh, target recognition is going to be kind of difficult. But I figure we might as well peek around here just in case there is something here. Scavs oftentimes like to hang out at this little truck here. Um, if they are there, it's, I'm not going to see them until I'm on top of them though, so... This is also where I got killed last time. I was I went to the pier area, which is where this building right there that I'm pointing my little laser at. That's where that is. And a scav just aimbotted me real hard and killed me real fast. All right, rock and roll time. Full auto. Let's see what we see. Oh, guy right there. Oh, off to my left. Guy's at the pier for sure. Don't know if I got the kill there. This is one of those moments I wish I had grenades. The guy screamed like I killed him, so I think he's dead, but... Here is gonna be tough. Deal with. Um, especially as they're locked onto me. They're obviously angry, as you can hear them, hear them yelling stuff at me in Russian. Sometimes if you sneak around, it breaks their lock, and then they go into sneaky sneaky mode. Uh, which actually gives you a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, but they're going to be right in this area. Um, they might have pushed up a little bit, though, because they locked onto me. i got to be prepared for that. Um, there's a safer way to get to them, but um, I'm a little afraid if I try and do it, I'm going to get bopped here. Checking there. That's That's kind of the opening. We just need one more, so I'm kind of tempted to go for it. Might also be more... That is, I think, a scav. Or is that the sign that I always think is a scav? I think that's just a sign. All right. This sign always trips me up, because it's like a triangular sign. It looks like the head and shoulders of a guy. There's the guy I killed. So this is the problem. I got to look in a lot of different directions here. Done. Go, go, go. Do I see the twinkling of a flashlight up there? Could be. Guy on the beach. 
I think that was our two. I may be mistaken on how many I need, though. He's got a little pistol here. Uh, let's search him. Make sure he doesn't have something real cool. Scavs can have really rare stuff. Uh, just another key. Pretty common key. That. Top off our ammo here. Thanks, Mustani, for letting me know. I, I thought I may have had it, but... Uh, looks like we dumped enough ammo that I'm going to be out of ammo, so I can stuff something that was in, in here into my little lockbox. So, to explain, inventory-wise, you got your rig, you got your pockets, you got your backpack, and you have your, uh, your pouch. Your pouch is what I call the lockbox, because anything you put in it, if you die, you get to keep. That's, like, your only real thing. So, the important stuff I'm putting in there, so I don't lose it. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and take a risk here and push the pier. We do have the pure boat that we may be able to extract on. No guarantees that's active, though. We're going to take a little safer route here. Because the big problem is getting to the pier. Because there's a, quite a choke point to get to it. And the scabs can zero in on you and kill you. Because, like, I'd have to go up this way to get in there. And then there's an opening right there. And the scabs can see you coming a long way. And if they're already locked onto you, they're just going to annihilate you. That's what happened last time. I saw a scab, and then he just started uh, aimbotting me hard. And um, I couldn't really do anything to react to him. You can also see through the slit and take shots. But that gives you somewhat of an advantage as well. We know that they're there. The just question is, where did they go when they got angry? They could have pushed up, maybe been in this area. Or be up on the road up there. I gotta assume that they're still up here. They're just gonna peek around. Uh, I don't see anything. Okay, they're not up on the road. I think you can push around this way, yeah, yeah. Make sure they're not up on the pier itself. What hui? Oh, he's right on top of me. Hey, fare vrubai vadil. Come on up. So, what do we have here? Oh, there's another one. I'm trying to draw him out with that shot. Where are you? This is going to be dicey. I think there's at least two of them. I'm not 100% sure where they are either. And if I guess wrong, they'll, they'll kill me, so... Let's kind of take some things out of the equation. Make sure they're not behind me. They could be in this little store here, because I heard footsteps on wood. Yeah, he's in the building. You cheeky bastard. Good thing I had lots of bullets, huh? 
See those guys? They're sneaking around little like little punks. <laughs> and that's where contacts helped me a lot because I could hear them. Uh, I could hear the difference between them walking a wood being inside the building and them walking on the um, the asphalt. Ooh, he has some things. Hot rod. Alright. Oh, hello. That's a good find. That right there is worth like 90 grand. Uh, I gotta think of how I'm gonna make room for that. I guess we'll get rid of a, a match. You always want to have a slot open in your um, rig so you can do reloads and not drop your mags. If you don't have the room in your rig or your pockets, you're going to drop it on the ground. I think that was our boys. And I'm full up on loot. I could get greedy and loot some more. But I've had a good run. Let's see if the pier boat works. And then if it doesn't, then I'll loot because I'm already stuck here. There it is, yep. Alrighty. Successful. We got more kills than we needed. Which is fine. We were able to dictate the, the range there good. Like, if I had just gone through the front entrance, there was a good chance that they would have had good cover and I wouldn't have been and been stuck on the open. With that, we... we What we did is we just kind of, like, reduced the possibilities, right? We went around the back so they could only be in front of me. And then we just tried to find them. And we used process of elimination based off of the sounds we were hearing. Alright, cool. So six kills... Um, mostly headshot, I mean, uh, chest shots, but we got one headshot. Um, longest distance, that was 150 meters, so I guessed my range on the, uh, scav, on the, uh, the sniper scav correctly. Accuracy wasn't great, but I was, I was, uh, firing full auto a lot there. Okie dokie. So now we have to play the best game in Tarkov, which is Inventory Tetris. Now the battery I was mostly keeping around to get experience for strength. Because um, there's a number of things you can do to build up strength. And one of them is being purposely overloaded and just walking around in that state. Um, and that will play into health. Because health is just like charisma. You level it up by leveling other things up. So you level it up by leveling up your physical stats. So strength, endurance, vitality, leveling those three up will level up your health skill. Same thing is true with charisma. So you've got uh, perception, attention, intellect all play into charisma. Unfortunately, intellect is, uh, turns, is turned off right now. So I have zero experience, zero level, because there's nothing you can do to level this up. It, it doesn't do anything right now. So, alrighty, um, here we go. <laughs> So we burned through ammo. Uh, let's see what I got in my ammo case. Yeah, I, I can top that off. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to have to buy a little bit of ammo because I also like to go with, in with backup ammo. So we'll uh, we'll have to buy some more ammo. Um, we'll just throw the battery there. I'm probably going to end up selling the hunter. Matter of fact, let's unload the hunter and get its ammo. This ammo, like this gun in the hands of a scav is extremely scary. If that scav had even hit me once, he could have killed me in one shot. This ammo is the best ammo that this, this, of this ammo type has very high armor penetration capabilities. Even the best armor in the game, it will punch right through. So, um, and it has also very high damage value as well. I don't think it would necessarily one shot me unless he hit me in the head, but two shot for sure. Like he'd be able to kill me with that. And it's semi-auto, so bam, bam, you're dead. Um, so definitely frightening to face off against scavs sometimes. Just put that in our little ammo box here. Alrighty. Um, th the battery we're going to be tr bartering, fuel conditioner we're going to be selling, the sprots we're going to be selling, um, this and the lighter we're going to be selling. Probably the blood set is a sell as well as the cigarettes. 
But let's focus on these things first. So first things first. Do I have room for it? Yeah, I do. Okay. We're going to do required search. Uh, these are all the barters you can do. The one I want is this 95 round drum. But let's just see what else there is out there. You can get a Mosin. A couple people are trading keys. These are junk keys, though. They're not really worth the battery. That you know. Some people put up trades that don't make you know any sense for you to do. But this is a, a trader. This is Prepper or Rapport, or however you pronounce that. Uh, he's one of the uh, dealers. So you can just do that, trade in the battery, and we get ourselves a 95 round drum. So that's how the barter system works. Um, it's one of the reasons why you want to pick up a lot of the loose junk in the game. But also you can just sell things, which is what we're about to do. Sell all that. We're going to sell the Tarcola. I just had that around in case we got thirsty and we needed that. Um, we're going to store the that. And then a lot of these things I'm going to want to keep because they just are good barter items. And this is something I can put on a future M4. So this is all my sell stuff. So let's sell that. We're going to sell that all to the therapist because I think she'll buy every single one thing. Um, this was actually a really good run for me from a money standpoint, too. So, oh, wow, I didn't know Tarcola was worth that much. You have to keep that in mind. So, boop, 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 boop. She's, this is the only thing she won't buy because it's a weapon part. So, we got 117,000, which is pretty darn good for a run where we weren't really trying to make money. And then we'll sell that to Skier for another, I think, 10 grand. No, it's only, it's only 2,700, so that's actually not that valuable. But, hey, we got a little bit of money out of that. Alrighty, uh, we also have to sell the gun. But there, uh, I guess I'll sell the Mac Rob as well. So that's all the stuff that we want to sell. This stuff we're going to keep. So I'll sell that to Peacekeeper. He's the only one that will buy things in a different currency. He always buys in dollars. So we're going to sell it to him because we're going to need dollars to buy his ammo. Alrighty. So let's put our money away. That there. And the dollar. Okay. So the only thing we need to do outside of just throwing this stuff aside uh, is to buy us some ammo, which is from Peacekeeper. It's it's rather expensive ammo, if I haven't already said that. Uh, I'm going to buy uh, kind of in bulk a little bit. So, oh, it's $4 a round. We're going to buy, I always like to buy it in 240 lots. The reason why I buy it in 240 lots, although in this case it actually doesn't make a... Well, yeah, no, it, it makes sense, because if you multiply 240 by 4, that math doesn't check out. It's because these prices are actually not quite to $4, but they always round up if you buy them singularly. So if I bought a single round, it'd cost me $4, but as I buy them in bulk, you see the true price. It only works that way with dollars and euros, I think. Rubles are worth so little, I think it's always going to be face value. Okay, so we just need the 60 rounds as kind of like a backup. Oh, I have extra painkillers. We can get rid of that. If any of my medical cases need... Yeah, okay, we don't have any room in my medical case. That there. Then the extra rounds I'm going to put in my um, ammo box here for later. And uh, we can use that on a future run if we need to keep going. Okie dokie. So we are good on all the other three locations. I only need one kill. One kill is all I need, so let's see how worn out the gun got. So it was at 92 something, now we're at 89.3. I think once we get to about 70, we're going to have to really start thinking about repairing this gun because um, it's getting kind of worn out. Problem with repairing, uh, same thing is true with a lot of things in this game. So your armor, as it gets beat up, you need to repair it. You'll lose max durability. So your durability for the armor is pretty much how many hit points it has. This defaults to 45, so this is armor that's already been repaired once, at least. Uh, and by repairing it, it dropped the um, max durability. The more you have to repair it, usually the more you're going to lose max durability. Um, but also, the more times you repair it, the worse off it gets. Okay, we're more or less ready. I could sell the designer shades, and considering that the fact that they are clipping through my face mask, they have earned themselves a sell. They are very trendy. They're John Lennon's glasses, but uh, we have some clipping issues with the, the gear, and we can't abide that, so. Okay, dokie. Let's go to interchange. Uh, interchange. 
As much as you guys are probably going to hate it, I'm going to go 2 in the morning. Because I don't want to run into a lot of players. Um, the interchange can be a, a blunder. And uh, you can see a lot of death. <laughs> a lot of death. Pl player versus player violence on this map. As time goes on, though, it will become daylight. Uh, it starts getting light around about 5 in the morning. And by the time you get to 6, it's fully light. So 2 in the morning is a little early for that. It'll probably be fully night most of the time. We also have clipping issues with the buckle on the helmet, as you can see. It's clipping through the chin there. there yeah, there's a little bit of issues with some of the um, clothing items. And then, like... This kind of stuff. So if you want to go the fashion route, sometimes this stuff bothers you, right? Got to coordinate. So I made it through that pretty well, that last run. We got six kills, which is decent. And we didn't get hit at all, which is important. And I may finally knock this damn quest out of, out of here. And at this point, this, this gun has gotten 16 of the kills I need out of 48. So this has done the majority of the work for me. I've had a lot of guns that have gone into this trying to do this quest. But this is the one that has accomplished the most. And I think this might be the most worn out I've ever made a gun. I'm not 100% sure of that, but... The way the clock works in this game, like, it's not linked to real time, and it doesn't run like real time. It runs much faster. So when I first went to join this match, it was like, I don't know, let's say 2.10 in the morning, right? Um, right now, the time is still, is still ticking, right? It doesn't freeze the instance when you hit, I'm joining the match. The, 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 the in-game world, the time is always ticking. You have two times you can go into a map, and they're always 12 hours apart from each other. So I could have gone 2 in the morning or 2 p.m. Um, I could have picked either one. So it really just depends on what you want to do. Uh, when it, it comes to me trying to do stuff against NPCs, I oftentimes like to do the weirder hours. Because when you do the full daylight hours, you're going to be running into players because players don't want to have to contend with the night because it's dark and it's hard to see things and, you know, it's not ideal. I tend to avoid nighttime because I don't. it doesn't look good from a stream standpoint, but I just want to get this quest over with, man. I've been trying to do this quest a while and I've been having a really runs of bad luck. Um, and we only need one kill. It's not hard to do on interchange. Uh, I say that I might still die trying to do it, but... As a matter of fact, I could have done this quest already, and I got a little greedy on trying to get the objectives done. Okay, a scav can spawn in this little tented area, but I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But you'll note the lighting condition is actually a lot better once you get past those dawn dusk hours. Because um, you have the moon and the stars giving you a lot of light. As long as it's not overcast and raining. If you go into the nighttime and it's overcast and raining, that's the worst. It is Pitch black. Leaving for volleyball, I'll keep the stream up for viewers' sake. Thank you very much, Mistani. Um, we are going to be playing a, a bit of Mordhal after this, which my title says anyway. Which I'm looking forward to. It's the second time I've played, and I've really enjoyed it. Okay, so scabs can be in here, but it's really early in the raid, so they may not be. Was that a duffel in there? I didn't know a duffel was there. There's a duffel in that shop. No, it's not a duffel. It's a guitar. Wow. Good eyes, mouse. So I'll try and stay onto my toes because there could be a scab here, but I don't think we're going to run into one. have a little bit of a listen. Are we in full auto or a single shot? Full auto makes sense in this place. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't think the scab's here. So there was just a big lag spike there. Could have been a player loading in. And again, it could have... Oh, hello. Silence was usually worth good money. We're just going to have to stand on our toes. I'm going to go back the way we came. If I can, I'd like to do this quest outside the mall. So we're going to try and give that an opportunity. With that lag spike, though, I feel like I should be careful. Because a scab may have spawned and be coming into this area. We just, we just have to be careful. Just stopping every so often to listen. Because, like, there's a lot of crap in the way. And hearing him might be the more sure way of knowing where he is. Rather than seeing him. It worked before. There's just a shadow there. Actually, no, it's a sign. Oof. Alright. Let's get going. What time we got? Okay. So... This map, you got an hour. If you come in at the beginning. So we've got plenty of time. And in my opinion, the longer we wait, the better off we'll be. More time for scabs to spawn in. Uh, less likely players, PMC players, are going to be around. They may get in, get killed, or kill each other, or just leave. They get what they want and they leave. Um, so there's that. You have a higher chance of running into player scavs, but they're scavs. So me killing them still counts. Whether they're player controlled or not doesn't matter. The, the important thing is that they're scavs. All right, let's switch to single shot because it might be a little longer range engagements at this point. And although you can do longer range engagements with uh, full auto, I find that it tends to waste ammo real bad. And you'll miss most of your shots. Alright. Keep going. I'm kind of looking forward to getting rid of this damn UN gear. <laughs> I'll never need it again after this point. And damn, will I not want it. <laughs> These, this armor has gotten me killed so many freaking times. Like, times I know if I'd had better armor, I would have survived. And when you have a gun that's worth 250k, you have armor that's worth 60k. It doesn't really match up too well. Okay, we should calm down. Might be giving ourselves away a little bit too much with all this running. That's one thing you have to be mindful of in this game. Running, when somebody has comms, running sounds like really loud. It's like somebody beating on a drum, so if you're in the area of somebody that has those, they'll know you're coming. Each pomegranate juice and TP. Let's hopefully not mix those two up. I don't want to mix my pomegranate juice with my uh, bleach. been quiet on the map so far. It could be that I'm by myself here in this raid, or there could be a player in here and they're just doing a hatchet run, so they're just running in, getting something, and running out. A lot of people go and do uh, Kiba runs, so there's a store in the mall called Kiba, and it's a gun store. You need keys to open it up, but if you can get there fast and you can open it up, there's a lot of really valuable loot in there. You can get full-on guns, you can get a lot of weapon parts, you can get full-on armor. So people always like to run over there and try and get stuff, but... Oh, now I hear gunshots. 
But I was about to say, as a result, it's the most it's one of the most dangerous areas. Also, there's a scab boss on this map. And I really like him. He's really cool. But he's also very dangerous. Um, his name is Killa. And uh, I think his name gives away what he's good at. <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of people that do those hatchet runs, they run a risk of running straight into him and getting murdered. Which might have been what those gunshots were. Hard to say. Could be a player just killing scabs or other players, or it could be Killa murdering people. Uh, Killa will not kill other scabs, but he will kill player scabs. Because he can smell the player on you. So you're not safe if you're a player. At any, at any occasion. And to explain, scabs don't kill other scabs, so if you're a player scab, the NPC scabs will leave you alone. Unless you kill them. Like, if you turn on them and start attacking them, they'll turn on you. But, um, otherwise, uh, they'll leave you alone. It's also kind of like a geographical thing. So if you kill a scab somewhere where the other scabs don't know about it, the other scabs won't aggro on you. It's something a lot of newer players don't really understand. Um, because they'll play like a map like Factory, right? And Factory's really small. So if you kill a scab on the map, the other scabs will know about it. There we go. Quest done. Where's our extract? Southeast. So it's right here, but I'm not going to go to it because... Um, we haven't accomplished enough. We'll just get a run-through penalty. It's okay. We'd still get the quest done. Um, but I'd like to not have run-through penalties if I can avoid it. We have to be careful, though, because um, this is kind of a hot spot. Be a lot of scabs in the area. Might want to loot that dude I killed, but he's going to be out in the open. And uh, we may get killed trying to do it, so we should really check the area. Make sure we're okay. I'm going to take a little lie down right now. Oh, Got to reload. Do what I want to do. Hello. Somebody just tossed a grenade. And it sounded pretty damn close. I might actually just leave. It's a little bit cowardice on my point. But this gun does done so well for me. It, that made me jump a little. Another grenade toss. You know, grenades are deceptive though. That might be over at the power station. It's definitely outside. Which is concerning. I have a feeling if it was in front of me, I would have been seeing the flashes and stuff, though. That doesn't mean a player is close, and a player is highly geared. I'm very conflicted on this, because, like, my gut is telling me get the F out. Because we've got our quest done. Screw this. Let's get let's get out just so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Because at this point we're not we're not bound by this damn quest anymore. We're gonna get very little experience, but I don't care. This quest is giving me so much problems, and I'm not about to forfeit another gun. Especially the, this gun. This is a Hall of Fame gun. This gun pretty much did this quest halfway by itself. Where so many other guns failed me. So and I have been modding it over time as a reward for its service. I wouldn't want it to go into the hands of some other dick. So, out we go. And if that guy's chucking grenades, he more than likely has pretty good gear. Alrighty. So the consequence of a run-through is you get a lot less experience. I think it's about half of what you should. You also don't get a big bonus to your um, experience that you get, which is, it's called surviving, more or less. You get a survival experience boost, which is worth 300. And then when you survive legit, you get a one and a half multiplier. So this is a half multiplier, so it halved what experience I could have gotten. But if, if I'd gotten enough experience, not only would I have gotten an extra 300 experience, but I would have gotten a one and a half multiplier for, for making it through the raid. Now, if you die on the raid, I would have gotten the full experience of 136, but then I'd be dead and lose everything. So I just kind of like the way run-throughs work. 
ideally you don't want to have them and and what have you but there's some circumstances where you're just trying to get a quest done uh let's say it's a really annoying quest where you have to go and pick something up and then leave and and survive you just want to get it done you don't want to you don't want to mess around um and get killed so those are the times you often get run throughs and it's like really justifiable most other times i'd like to avoid it because you know it's not ideal Alrighty. Um, so that quest is done. I forget what the rewards for it are. Does Bleach trade for anything that I would want? Trades for a helmet, but I can buy that helmet. No problem. And, and uh, it's not that expensive of a helmet. So, um, I say we, we trade most of this stuff. I'm just going to pick some of these things up so we can make room for the stuff we're going to sell. So we'll, we'll sell all three of these items to the therapist. Healer, therapist... Sell, sell, sell. So yeah, we didn't make a lot of money on that run. But hey, we made it in. We made it out. We got the quest done. The quest that has been causing me a lot of problems. Uh, you know what? I'm going to sell this silencer too. So we'll sell that to Skier. And now dollars aren't so important to me because this quest is over. That's worth about 10 grand. All right. Not the most valuable thing in the world, but we'll take it. Yeah, did I empty out? Yeah, no, I didn't empty out the money in my... Uh, documents case here so uh, I also took the wrong thing in there um, I should have we can sell these keys as well I should have brought it always bugs me when this happens and yeah, top that off uh, I should have brought in my different uh, case here Wait a second the dorm key do I have a what do I have a dorm key in here that must have been a mistake I already have this key. I hope I didn't sell a key unintentionally. I'm gonna have to double check. I don't have a duplicate of that one. Let's uh, let's check that. I always grab the wrong case. Uh, do I already have a 315 key? I do indeed. So that's a duplicate. So I must have picked that up in another raid and just not noticed it. So, these should all be duplicates. Although, I may not have the 203 and the 206 key in this, because they might not be all that useful. My other area that I store keys is here. So, 203 and 206. Yeah, so we already have all those. So, we can sell those as well. Uh, let's just make life on me easier. We'll just do that, and then put these here. A couple of these keys aren't going to be worth a whole lot, but the 315 key might be worth something. So just check. Dub dorms room 315. Yep. Trade. Therapist. She's the only one that will buy keys. Okay. A little over 12k. That's not too bad. Alrighty. The Picard show. You heard bad things. I'm not surprised that you heard bad things. Let's put it this way. It's CBS, right? I hope I'm remembering that. CBS is handling of a lot of the um, modern Star Trek content has not really been very good. So I did not have high expectations for just about anything they're going to do. Even if they are using nostalgia to try and get people to watch their show. That stuff doesn't really work on me anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if it ever worked on me, but. All right, I'm, I'm going to have to think about like what we're going to do next. Um, but the, one of the first things I'm going to do is sell those damn UN gear. I'm going to pain my ass. They basically have over one of the writers. Ah. Uh, well, I don't know. Have you seen the the I shouldn't really talk about it because I didn't really watch it. What is the, the with the show Discovery or whatever the f that show is called? Um, a lot of producers involved with this stuff anymore. <laughs> ah, yeah, that happens too. There's a there's a story I heard. So there's this writer. And the thing that's of significance to me is he was the one that wrote Big Trouble in Little China. 
which is one of it's like actually my favorite movie of all time really um he came up with the story for um is it rio what's the one with the animals that are act like people like they they are more or less people um and i, I haven't seen it myself but it's one of those I, there's so many of these these disney kid movies anymore but more or less what happened is that guy wrote all the characters and all the all the um like what like he had uh, drawings of what they looked like yeah rio i think is that right he had drawings of what they looked like he had all the characters he had the plot and everything he presented it to disney and disney said nah we're not interested in this and then they turned around and made the movie they stole everything from him. And Disney's known for doing that, too. It's a thing that's a real problem these days with writers. That's one of the reasons why a lot of the best writers don't work on movies anymore. Because um, they get they get the shaft hardcore. Uh, they don't get paid very well. And when, when and oftentimes, if they present their, their scripts, they, um, they'll get the shaft. Even if their script's used, oftentimes what they'll do is the, the 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 Hollywood companies will have their their like company writers they'll take the script and then they'll do extensive rewrites of it you see this a lot in modern movies you'll see like the wrist of the the wrist the list of writers and it'll, and there'll just be like five or six of them that's because the script had many rewrites the reason why Hollywood does that is because if they rewrite it enough they can go oh well we rewrote it so much that although you gave us the original screenplay we didn't really use much of your material so yeah we can't really give you very much money they do that all the time and it's it's bad. It's real bad, and it sucks. Uh, writers get the shaft in in, in movies, in particular. Uh, I really would hope that doesn't turn out to happen in television. But it's sad to say, sad, sad to hear it may be happening in television too. But that's why a lot of the best writers work in television now. Uh, it's more guaranteed paychecks. Uh, the the um, producers kind of need the writers because if the writers it's hard to replace them mid-season and stuff like that. So once they have them in on a season, um, they're not likely going to ditch them. Whereas with a movie, they could pick them up initially and then ditch them later and have the script rewritten, and rewritten into oblivion. So it's just a bad place to be. So if you're wondering why Hollywood movies have such bad writing anymore, it's because the best writers don't work for Hollywood anymore because they don't want to get the shaft. Or... Originally, the screenplay was decent, but they had their corporate rewriter rewrite it into oblivion, and then they put all their focus group nonsense into it and just... Sorry, that's a lot of ranting, but I really I feel strongly about the subject. I feel I feel that Hollywood is just garbage anymore, and I really hate where it is at. Which is why I don't watch modern movies. I know a lot of people that are in my community... They make fun of me because I don't watch modern movies, but that's why. Because I don't feel like they have any right to to get my uh, attention and my uh, my viewership. And I, I'm not really uh, an indie movie guy. I, I don't like artsy fartsy movies. Movies I, I've seen some and I like some, but it's not my it's not my bag. So indie movies don't really. There are indie movies that could do it for me, but like your your traditional indie movie, the artsy fartsy movie, that's not my style. I'm not I'm not that kind of viewer. So they haven't earned my dollars exactly, Leo. Thank you for putting that together. My mind sometimes is just a. Uh, fractured mess and sometimes it helps to have a little bit of aid in putting it together <laughs> all righty guys um let's turn this quest in we don't have to necessarily collect the uh, rewards from it right now but this will lead into another quest which we can actively do so rewards we get a a rifle a bolt action rifle some ammo and a couple of sets of, oh this is the best night vision in the game so that's quite a reward no actual money but that that's probably worth a lot i mean let's check it on the uh thing so gpnvg i'll try and remember that but this is the one that i i think we should focus on this is the guide and the objective here just go on every map and survive and the one that i really want to link together Probably wait. Hang 
Yeah, that's sad to hear, Pug, but they would do that. Um, yeah, I'd probably wait till the weekend when we can get a crew into labs. So that'd be fun. Get Dutton in there and watch him die. <laughs> um, it might be wild, though, to play labs on the weekend. So we'll see, but I kind of want to do a labs run and see what we can do with that later. But yeah, you got every map in the game. You have to survive one time. It's pretty much the quest here. And the rewards are, are pretty good. You get $25,000, which is a lot of money. Um, you get a lot of experience. You get uh, a couple things unlocked. You get a, a sight. You get um, a piece of armor that is like a equipment you could put on a helmet. And then you get some uh, mags. So, cool stuff. Alrighty. Um... Where are we as far as other things, though? Because, like, my, my main objective before the wipe happens is get to level 40. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, honestly, though, because the amount of experience you need to get, like, from 35 to 40 is a real grind. And that quest I did was 32,000 experience, and I'm still not the level 39. Um, and a lot of the other quests that I have going... Like that one I just had, 35,000, so that would push me over. But a lot of the other quests I have, they're 20,000 at best. So I'd have to do like two of them to get to the next level here. So it's going to be, um, it's going to take me some work, but we are working on it. Like, see, for example, this, this skill, when I checked it in raid, it was at 78.1. Since the two raids I did, I, I got 0.3 <laughs> experience points. So it takes time for sure. Alrighty, uh, now that we know what our objective is, which is to survive, let's pick gear that we think we can do that with. Um, we can run with whatever armor we want, and I have been saving armor uh, for just an occasion. I've got uh, pretty good armor here, a lot of armor here. Got some good stuff sitting around. Got a lot of helmets that I've been sitting on. As a fact, in this very bag that I'm holding. Got a lot of helmets we could use. So... A lot of variety. I can finally use night vision again. Something I couldn't do before. While I'm thinking about it, I don't want to, like, forget. I just want to see real quick what the that night vision is worth. So, um, we'll go to... I don't know if it's under... It might be under weapon parts. Sights. Special sights? Yeah, it was this night vision. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Uh, almost $1,700. And for comparison's sake, multiply this by 100, and that gives you about where you are rubles-wise. So that would be at least seven. I'm trying to think this through. My brain is not being able to do the math right. That would be, what, 170000 right? That's a lot. That's a lot of money just for one thing. So... Yeah, that's a payout and a half, especially as you get $25,000 on top of all that. So this is a quest we really want to we really want to do from a monetary just get stuff standpoint. All right, so we probably have enough time for one more raid. Um what would we want to do? Maybe a customs run? Yeah. Customs run makes sense. So we'll, we'll set up for a customs run. So let me get my customs keys, which is this one. And we just grab a, a random wallet. Let's make sure they're empty. Yeah, they're, they're empty. Grab a wallet. Alrighty, so we got our medicals. Um, we're going to need to acquire or use armor. Just not sure how good armor I want to go with. Maybe go with the killer set. Maybe put this armor in here and get, give ourselves a little bit more space. And then, as far as other equipment we use, maybe a decent helmet, um, which would be in this bag. Yes? No? Maybe so? No, I think it's going to be in the, the item case. Yeah, yeah. We'll run this helmet. It's already insured, so... Oh, yeah, we got to take the contacts off, though. You can get it there eventually. There, there we go. This is the best armor I have. One of the downsides with this armor, though, is it makes you very slow. Very slow. I cannot emphasize the very element of that enough. Um, it really slows you down. So, um, that's okay for, like, a maybe customs. It's okay. 
uh, factory would definitely be okay because being slow on factory doesn't necessarily matter because it's it's kind of a small map. Okay, now we just need a backpack. I'm going to run with the same backpack we ran last time. The good thing about this backpack is it doesn't really give you any penalties for wearing it. So when you look at it, it just has a set container size. It's not the biggest ma uh, biggest bag in the world, but it's okay. Or is it like, you look at the scav backpack. You got a movement penalty for using it. And a lot of bigger bags will do that to you as well. So if we look at this. This is a lot bigger bag, which is a nice advantage, but it does have a speed penalty involved with it. So it does slow you down a bit. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. Um, okay, so we're all insured. We're all ready to go, more or less. Let's do our customs run. I'm going to try and do it daylight hours as well. Oh, look at that guy. He's got the little bubble hat. I, I always like that. It's a nice comical uh, thing. So we're going to do customs. I could do interchange again. We'll go 538 in the morning. That's all right with me. This will probably be a bloodbath. But all we have to do is get in and get out. And if we die, it's not the end of the world. And I think this gun is set up better for this. I should check what the durability is, though. Uh, we wouldn't have put that many rounds through it, so it's still probably in the 80s. And I don't know. Like, it's kind of hard to explain exactly. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, like, they'd hear me talk about movies, and, and it's kind of hard to explain, like, how movies are so much different. Um, like, because I say, like, one of my, I, I like a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. And Commando is one of my all-time favorites. And if I'm totally truthful to you, Commando is kind of a dumb movie. It has a lot of silly stuff in it, and you, you can't really take it all that seriously, right? So you might argue, like, what's the difference between Commando and some of the dumb action flicks you have today? And it's just, it's hard to explain, but to me, it just, just feels different. First off, I think CGI is, is partly to blame with that. Ooh, good, my favorite spawn in. I love this spawn in so much. It gives it to me all the freaking time, too. But maybe it's just because I grew up with it as a kid that I'm slightly biased. I don't know. I'll, I'll give you that. I'm not going to say I'm perfect and that I'm without bias. Everyone has their own bias, and that's my bias in a nutshell right there. I like older movies. I like the Arnold Schwarzenegger flicks. I like um, stuff like that. Um, and I'll admit some of the stuff I like is just dumb action flicks, but to me, they're a hell of a lot better than a lot of the stuff you see nowadays. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy a film nowadays. Like, an example of a modern film that I kind of enjoyed, or I kind of, I really liked. Um, I really liked, um, I don't really do the comic book movies, and it's not because I, I don't like them and I don't think they're, they're, they're good. It's just that it's not really my boat. It's not really, like, something I really care about. But I didn't, I didn't mind The Watchmen. I like that. I like Dread. Uh, not Judge Dread with Sylvester Sloan. Dread. Uh, with, what's his face? Carl whatever is his name. Carl Urban is his name, I think. I'm really bad with names, so if I got that wrong, I apologize. But I think his name's Carl Urban. That movie was good. I, I have problems with it. There are a couple things I have problems with, but for the most part, I really liked it. Um, so there's modern movies I like for sure. It just, it's just. It just is what it is. And it's tempting to loot here, but I'm not going to do it because I think it's a death wish. Death wish with Charles Bronson. <laughs> Yeah, I don't ne necessarily hate the Stallone one. Uh, but Rob Snyder is a little bit of a problem for that movie. 
And I understand why they made that mistake, because if Rob Snyder was in um, Demolition Man, and that worked okay, right? But the problem is, Rob Snyder was a minor character in Demolition Man. And uh, Judge Dredd, they gave him a major part, and it's a little too much Rob Snyder. He's, he's much better in small doses. All right, our extract should be um, crossroads, indeed. I don't know the why the one is marked in red. I don't know if that's like, I just don't understand. Sometimes they're marked in red. I don't know why they are. I thought at first it was like you've confirmed that that extract um, is gone, but that crossroads extract is always there. So I don't know why that one particular one is red. Unless maybe that's the one I used last time. Maybe that's what that's an indicator of, because I'm pretty sure I used crossroads last time to extract. Last time I, I extracted from customs. I don't have comms this time, so it's going to be a lot harder to hear things. From a couple different reasons, this helmet also blocks noise. Like, a lot. Just checking for the factory key. Even though I already have it, it's a pretty valuable key, so if I can find one... Um, I'll just sell it and be happy, or I'll give it to one of my friends. Because they could use it too. It's You can get it through Questline, which they may have just stopped putting it out there on the map, because it, it used to be you had to find it. It was a pain in the ass to find, but... I've checked the places that it used to spawn over and over again, and the wikis say it's the same spot, so I keep checking it, and I just have a feeling that it's not there anymore, but they haven't really updated the wiki. Alright, we can get absolutely swarmed by scavs here, so I have to be somewhat careful. Because sometimes they hang out in this parking lot. And once you draw one, you can have like five or six swarm you. But I, I think we can handle it. I've got pretty good armor. Was that two empty containers in a row? There's no way somebody beat me here. At least I don't think so. I'm just going to go ahead and stick a couple things in my lockbox, because you know what? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely we're going to be designing more characters. I already have a couple things. I want to adjust some of my characters, because I looked at the wiki for Mordhal last night. The Mickey, the, the wiki, the Mickey, jeez, wow, my words today. Uh, the wiki is not really all that extensive, but it's the kind of game where you don't really need an extensive wiki, so I kind of understand. Um, but I looked at it a little bit, it gave me a little bit of a, a confirmation on some stuff that I guessed at. Um, so there's going to be some redesigns. I'll get into that more, though, once we, we get into the playing. Okay, I don't see any scavs. Um, we'll just move on. I have to believe that there's players on this map, because I don't think we were in the queue that long. But it's been very quiet. No shots. Oh. I don't know if you just went prone or we dropped him. And I will have no confirmation of that. The only thing we're going to get is he, he gets back up after a period. We have to be careful though, because if he is still alive, he'll get back up and start laying into me. I'm not sure if he just dropped prone though. He may have. I do have to be careful too, because I just shot, so people might have heard my shots and be prepared to murder me. So I'm trying to keep eyes up on that roof in case he didn't die. Thought I saw movement, but I'm not. No confirmation on that. I think I see his body. He's either being very patient with a laying down or he's dead. Not sure if that was a scab or a player, but we'll just give them a couple more shots to make sure that they're not just prone. Okay. 
Could have been a player just like sitting there trying to figure out where they, they heard shots. Or it could have been a scav. Either one's a possibility. We did fire a lot of shots though, so I would like to repack my mags, but let's just be safe first. We'll check this area, make sure there's no players in here. And then we'll take a safe spot and repack our mags. Uh, I don't have any stamina to jump in here. Um, there's a gun. That up. Anything in the game can spawn in that spot. Always worth a check. Get some medicals here. Morphine. Not sure how safe this particular spot is, but we'll go ahead and take a knee right here and just do our thing. But yeah, I'd like to get like some of the gameplay down. Like, um, I'll move it if I need to. But if I ha if I need to grab a gun fast, it's better to have this slot open because we know this will fit in my bag. So we possibly got two kills there. No confirmation on either one, though. I'm hoping the one was a player. We might check it to see. Uh oh. Is that my footsteps or somebody? I think it was my footsteps, but let's just be double sure here. Crap, crap. That's all that's really in here. Just checking. Somebody could have been down in that area. It would be dangerous to check that body, though, because it's kind of out in the open. But, like, what do we think of that? That The guy was taking an E, and I don't think a scav would have necessarily done that. Oh, let's reload. Oh, no. Damn it. I did have my big mag in there. I wasn't sure I did. We'll put it back in. Maybe a scav heard my shots and went down like that, but I don't know. That kind of spoke to me as it was a possibly a player. That door is not normally open. Yeah, that guy's dead for sure. That dead body is still there as well. I'm trying to think the best way to approach this so we can get to the body, not get killed. Because he may have a friend. We can't guarantee he's by himself. And if he has a friend, the friend may be camping the body, seeing if I'll loot it. Um. But we're not going to go there directly. Movement inside this building. At least I think so. Could have been just my, my own sounds, but I could have swore I heard movement. I'm paranoid because I feel like I heard movement. I'm just going to double check my suspicions. It's better to like be paranoid and be wrong. Than go, ah, oh, it was nothing and, la and, and laugh it off. Okay. Just double checked it. Honestly, my shots have been the only shots I've heard so far, which is weird. Okay. 
Oh, there's a shot. Probably gas station. Which is just off to our right. Somebody's having fun. I have to be careful though, because if they're up on that hill, they may actually be able to see in here. If they're up on that hill. Let's go check this body. I only have a rough idea where it is. Damn it, where is it? See it from over there. No, it was by a container. Oh, there. No? Yes, that is. Yeah, right there. I think that's a scav. Play down and loot him. Ooh, respirator. I need that. That's the last one I need. That's a quest. We're gonna have to risk our medicals. Um, let's check his other stuff. A lot of stuff on him. All the junk. Okay, so if somebody's at the gas station, taking the shortcut through the fa with the cat factory key makes no sense. So we'll go the safer route. Although, uh, there's no necessarily safe route, because very common place for them to attack the gas station is up on that hill, and I have to go through that hill to go there. But the factory, a, a factory key exits out right by the gas station, so if they're at the other side, I'll, I'll open that door right into gunfire, you know, like I'll die. And if the scab boss is there, kind of unwise. Not a wise way to go either. Let's take this nice and safe. With all those grenades and stuff, good chance. Yeah, boss is at the gas station, which is just another reason why I don't want to take that factory key exit. Because it will put me right in that. Right in that fighting. If I get in a fight with the players, I don't mind, but I'm here to survive. I'm not here to be in a stupid fight and die. So let's approach it from a better angle. Oh, big lag spike. Just gonna make sure what fire mode I'm on. I know what to do when I see bad guys. How are we doing on time here? We got 33 minutes. I think this is a 45 minute map, so we've been on the map for 12 minutes. And people have to go there to extract, so they may be coming this way if they are just trying to do like a get a loot and get out kind of run, which happens. People go to the marked room or some other places in the dorms and then they find what they want to find and they run out. Might just be a hatchling if that's the case, but they might get a gun full of ammo, so... From the mark room, that is. Alright, I'm gonna search his duffel. Pray for me. I don't just get axed right now. Not a fan of your CPU fan. Got him. I may have given my position away with that, though. But that's three kills. I think I even got him with maybe the second shot there, but I fired a couple extra rounds just to be sure. I noticed a lot of delay in scabs going down lately. Like, you'll hit them, and then there's, like, a very much, like, 
maybe even a two to three second delay before they drop. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it sure feels like two to three seconds. All right, we got to be prepared because if there's a guy up on this hill, I gave my position away a little bit there, so he may be looking for me. And I don't have comms on, so I'm not going to hear him coming. Likely. So we're going to have to use our eyes over our ears. I don't want to top off this mag, though, so let's just take a moment. Sometimes just every round can count. I want to be prepared for a firefight if it happens. I should have brought grenades. I, didn't, I kind of forgot about it, because I've been doing these scav runs where I have to kill guys with M4s. So... I haven't been bringing grenades just so I don't accidentally, like, waste the grenades on a scab. But now I think about it, a little bit of an oversight. Because there's times I'm like, ah, oh, damn, if I had a grenade right now, I'd use it. But I don't have a grenade, so I'm not using it. I need to learn to start bringing grenades, especially if I'm bringing this level of gear. Because I've got pretty darn good armor. I've got a pretty darn good at gun. It'd be nice to have that backup support of a grenade if I need it. If somebody's in cover, I need to flush them out, even if I don't kill, get the kill or damage. I just heard somebody walk, run into barbed wire. So somebody's close to me right now. I'm gonna be patient. Wait it out. Could have been a scav, but I don't know. There's barbed wire along a lot of these walls that are just off to the right. And um, if you walk too close to the wall, you run into the barbed wire from time to time. And I'm 100% sure I just heard barbed wire getting run into. Problem is, if somebody comes through this direction, they can see me really well, so... I guess we'll creep up here. The weird thing is, though, where I heard that, I heard the barbed wire sound, I don't think I'm that close to the wall that I would have heard it. So I'm, am, I, am I mistaken? Because there's no barbed wire near me. The fact that I'd hear that with my helmet on, maybe i just losing my mind. Which I am not going to argue against if you think I am. <laughs> Yeah, see the barbed wire on the top of the wall? I think that's the sound I heard. Some of it hangs loose like this, so if you walk too close to it, you'll run into it, and it makes a distinct sound. Now, scavs sometimes run into the barbed wire in accident. Just because of weird pathfinding. But where I heard this, I don't know. Hmm. Been quiet on this map, too, which is kind of weirding me out. We heard some gunshots and activity at the gas station, but it could have been somebody just doing a hatch run and getting murdered by the uh, scab boss. I wouldn't mind killing the scab boss, but the big liability with that is if there's a lot of player scabs, they'll like, they'll hear those shots and they'll come running and I won't really get an opportunity to loot because if I try and loot by myself, like this, you really, in my opinion, you need to tackle the scab boss with a friend because while you're trying to loot scabs, player scabs will come running and they'll kill you while you're looting. And it's so annoying. So when you do fight the scab boss and you're by yourself, you just got to pick up what you what you what valuable stuff you can get and get out of there, like not spend a lot of time. And it sucks because you have to leave a lot of stuff behind. But it's the wise way to tackle it. Because otherwise you get caught with your pants down. Somebody's been in the dorms. 
Because they've left that door open right there. Did hear a gunshot, very faint, off in the distance. Couldn't tell you direction. I want to get to uh, more where my extract is, and then we'll, we'll try and be a little bit more active. We haven't gotten a lot of looting done. We haven't gotten a lot of... Well, we've got a few kills, I think. But you'll know that I'm not being greedy, right? I mean, the one guy on the roof, I couldn't loot. But the guy on that tower... It's going to be a death trap to loot him. I've gotten killed doing it. So, um, probably best to just leave him. There's a lot of times I do stuff like that. I, I'll kill a guy and I'll just leave him. You, you lose out on a lot of gear and you lose out on a lot of experience, but you live. Okay, the fire's not up, so we can't extract. I don't think I've got enough experience to extract without a run through. And the way this quest works, I'm, I'm uh, very, I'm very... I'm going to give it a good percentage chance that um, you need to survive. Uh, the, the survival counts uh, if you don't get a run through. If you get a run through, I don't think it counts. I'm just checking to make sure there's nobody on the bridge ready to snipe me. It's been so inactive on this map, though. It's kind of weirded me out. We've got 25 minutes left. 20 less than that. So I figure we heard a little bit of activity. It's quite possible players have either died or left at this point. Like we saw the dude. Uh, we saw uh, somebody went through the dorms, right? Could have been exactly what we're talking about there. Somebody came in as a hatchling. They ran to the marked room. They got what they wanted and they just ran out. That could have been where we heard that barbed wire. Somebody just walking past the, uh, the fence. They hit the barbed wire, but they're just running. They're just running to get out of there. They're not here to fight. They don't have any weapons, unless they picked one up from the mark room. If we ran into him, it'd be easy kill. But... It just is what it is. I'm gonna cross over here. Yeah, somebody's been in the customs area, too. I didn't hear any shots, too, so that's kind of weird. Unless that was the shot we just heard. It was a single shot, too, which, um... Isn't really heavy fighting, to say the least. Well, we got rain and fog, but that's okay. We're going to be fighting mostly close ranges here. All right, I could extract now, but I don't think I've got enough experience to do so. I've got a few kills, but I haven't looted much. And I only checked one of the bodies of the guys I killed, so... Um, I do not think that's enough experience. we got to be careful in this alley. Right, here we go. A uh, big lag spike when we killed him. Other guy right there? Oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> Saw a trash bag. Thought it was a guy. Mouse is on it today. He's seeing all of the bushes and garbage bags, and he's ready for them. Come on. Open it. Something interesting here. Grab that. And a gun. Uh, we can carry this if we move our inventory around a little bit. There we have it. I'll leave the other stuff. I kind of want to take a knee and repack my mag. Not sure it's a wise move here, but I'll do it anyway. I don't think we fired that many rounds. And again, when you're on full auto, it could be deceptive. Okie dokie. Now we're going to play this textbook. Make sure we check our corners and that there's nobody here before we even think about looting this dude. Should I had a handgun. Uh, 
I blacked out his armor. That's why he stood there a little longer. He had body armor. We shredded his body armor, though. That is the, uh, the strength. Oh, another key. Um, that is the strength of the, uh, what am I doing? Don't need his mags. I mean, if I get desperate, we could always switch to the pistol or the shotgun, and there's ammo in it. But, um... We're not desperate, and we don't need the extra mags, I don't think. Alright, we're gonna do... A bit of a checkeroo in this area. Make sure we're... Uh, sure, I'll pick up duct tape. There could be a decent number of scabs in this little area, so we'll check it all. Sometimes there's gonna be loot the spawns in there. Yeah, somebody's been in this area because that trunk has never popped like that. Naturally. Another one popped there. Um, probably they spawned over here. Which would fit the narrative of what we've seen so far. Looting. Nice to get a drink. I'm kind of thirsty. Come on. Oh, that's the, kind of the opposite of what I wanted. You didn't check here, though, my friend. This is a little bit more valuable to show. Hey, there you go. You ask for some hydration, you get some. There's a medical bag in there. So that kind of speaks to me playing uh, that guy not being maybe as experienced. If you're going to check trunks that don't have a whole lot in them, check trunks to do. Uh, there's no reason in me covering up the trunk lift because uh, this guy already went through here and was being kind of aggressive with that. So, I mean, I F, F it. If it was me, I would put the trunk back down if I checked it. Because that guy just red flagged that he's been here. There weren't any bodies, so he didn't fight any scavs. Oop. I see movement. I want to see. I just uh, say I just saw a scav. We'll go get him here in a second. I just want to make sure that everything else is clear before we do it. I might be wrong. I could have swore I saw somebody move right to left. We'll come in here and loot first. We know that we've seen somebody come through here, so it's possible this has all been... I'm gonna purchase from a different angle. Because if I was mistaken in seeing something... Yeah, they just ran through the place. They weren't really looking for good loot, necessarily. There's a lot of cool stuff in this area. Nada? Okay. Oh, behind me. Yeah, so there is a scav in here. That was a lot of ammo you just made me waste, my friend. Another shoddy boy. Good, thanks for the hydration. Alright, so I was right about that. We only have 20 rounds. How many did we dump? A lot. Less than half. Alright, I think it's probably still worth. Oops. Still worth topping off, I guess. Because 20 rounds into a less than half mag maybe would be like 40 or so. There was the patented mouse. Hose them with bullets until they're dead. Aim? What's this aim you speak of? It's probably the most valuable thing that we have. Yeah, yeah. So, if that mag is more full, we'll put it back in. Yeah, which we just did. Check it again. About half. All right. 
So it either has 30 rounds or more than 30 rounds, just slightly. Which is better than the 30 rounds that we normally have, so... There may still be another one, too, so I can't, like, lower my guard and think that was the only guy. Uh, I might get out at this point, though, because, um... We've been in this raid for a little while now. And I would like to, uh... Switch over to another game, because usually it would go for about two hours, so. I think whatever players are here have left. I think that was our, our own scav. I could check the customs office area, but I, I feel like we've done enough. And... We'll get the survival here. I can guarantee you. I was about to say the timer wasn't showing up that I was extracting. So I was like, uh, excuse me? Alrighty, guys. We did it. We had a pretty successful day today. But kind of inactive from the player standpoint. I mean, we know there are players on the map with us uh, in that engagement. But they didn't really, uh, we didn't ever really encounter them. Now, we didn't go out of our way to find them, so there's that, too. But, if I were to put my narrative together, I think one player spawned in the, that, that container, uh, the storage area, by customs. They, they hit a couple trunks along their way, and then they just ran to dorms, they hit up dorms, they probably went to the marked room, picked up whatever they got, and they ran out. We probably heard them on their way out as they walked into the barbed wire, um, and then they left. The only other player I think we had, uh, very early into the match, went to the gas station, and the scab boss was at the gas station, and he got absolutely wrecked. Because we heard those grenades, and we heard gunshots, but after that we didn't hear anything else. Scav have, uh, scavs have pretty good weapons, and they have grenades, so I think that guy just walked right into the, into the gas station Completely unprepared for the scab boss, and they just absolutely murdered him. That's my guess, anyway. I didn't check the gas station, so I have no confirmation of that. But my head, that's the narrative. We've got five kills. Um, which is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Despite dumping all that ammo like I did, I still got 22% accuracy, which is pretty good for full auto most of the time. Although I think I had good accuracy until I went full auto. <laughs> Alrighty, that's not a bad run. Could have been better, but we get one survival checked off. The tough one's going to be factory. So that one I'm probably going to have to go in really heavily geared. Um, but I, I think, you know, we can do it.